Uh, hello there, people of the internet. My name is Udur Jagero, and this is Dialogues with Jagero. Today, we are talking forging prosperous, solidified men. Now, as a man, I have always had this feeling that right now, nobody really cares about the man. Well, Ricks does care about the man. <laughs> he doesn't. <laughs> you know? <laughs> and uh, we are having a situation whereby... The boy child is sort of left to, to his own devices to take care of himself. Uh, everything, like today, this week alone, I received uh, three funding grants, you know, and they are all geared towards women or women-led initiatives. My guest today is Jacob Elliott. I saw your name when I sent you money for the book. It is so damn long. <laughs> yeah, <They are> five. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, actually, they are five. You have re- you have written and plugged one, so to speak, mm. and plugged two, and plugged three. Yeah, and all of them is about fortifying the man. Yes, forging a prosperous man. Mm. In in the in your book, unplugged two, you talk about marriage rates are dropping, mm. and divorce rates are, are shooting up. The new world order is making men weaker and feminine and making women stronger and masculine, effectively making each gender terrible for each other. What is a a masculine frame? What are the kinds of beliefs, habits, and mindsets that emasculate men? What is it that is stopping stopping men from leading purposeful, prosperous lives, characterized by healthy, fulfilling relationships and families? What are some cool, hard truths men must embrace to forge the psychological infrastructure that can make them obtain financial success, navigate relationships, and become fulfilled people in the new social order? Whenever, whenever people in the manosphere talk, uh, it sounds like the man is an endangered species. But then again, we also know that man is the one that is... Uh, that is endangering himself, no? Yeah, you can say that. Why Why do you think men are becoming weaker and weaker and becoming more feminine and more feminine and women more masculine and more masculine? So thank you. Uh, thanks for having me. Yeah. Uh, first of Welcome all. Welcome to the program. Yeah, thank you so much. You so. are the very first uh, guest at Dialogues with Jagero and the growth of Jagero is... Oh, I was the first one. You, one of the first okay. people. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So my success is, is right at your door. Yeah, so thank you for having me. Mm. So the the things, uh, I, the tributaries that contribute to all this, uh, there are very many. But uh, the basic idea is that uh, we are raising girls to be career women. Mm. Okay? They are educated, they are raised for success. Success by masculine metrics, you know, get a good job buy a house, buy a property, ascend the ladder of, of, of success or your career. And later on, we expect them to be wives. And we are, they are never raised to be wives. So that becomes a big problem because uh, in the process of uh, chasing their career success, they have to be more masculine. They have to be disagreeable. They have to be confrontational. They have to be driven. They have to be much more. They have to dig into their masculine side. So when you now tell them they need to be wives, and the boys, of course, uh, they think that uh, a wife is someone who is supposed to submit to you, then it becomes a problem. But also more importantly, uh, because right now the the social order tells you that about equal partnerships, you need to get a partner and so on and so forth. In reality, the firmware that women have right now, women still expect that the man that they can love and respect is a man who uh, outstrips them in terms of performance, in terms of age, in terms of accomplishments, in terms of strength, in terms of intelligence, okay? What we call hypergamy. So the woman still expects the man to be better than them for them to be able to respect them. So as much as the social order tells you, uh, tells us about equal partnerships, uh, our women are not ready for that. Because if you find a situation where you are splitting the bills with a woman 50-50, then you'll find most women are complaining. They are wondering, uh, why should I split the bills with you and you are a man? Okay, so that is a big, big problem that we are having. Also, another reason is that uh, because uh, marriage is breaking down, a lot of boys are raised by single mothers. 
okay mm. so that also has an impact because when you're raised by a single mother you learn to express yourself like a woman okay you emote like a woman and then you also get comfortable with having a woman in charge of your affairs so that's why you find a situation where and women are complaining about this a young man goes for a date and he expects the woman to pay he's not uncomfortable with that because all along in his life um, our female figure has been taking care of his bills and you'll also find the same same situation when they get married and there's a problem in the family the man expects the woman or the wife to solve that problem so mm -hmm. you find women are complaining about having weak men and so on and so forth but it's all stemming from the upbringing that these men have had mm -hmm. being raised by a single mother and of course the women also are not very good with boundaries so this man cannot enforce boundaries even when he's offended he doesn't know how to deal with that he thinks for example that uh, you find so many cases where when a man is disrespected by his wife or by his girlfriend he buys her gifts okay to a pizza and thinking that uh, if he does that then she's going to be more loving or respectful which of course does not work it just makes uh, much more disrespectful so those are some of the reasons why we're having the situation we have today mm. uh, about women getting educated women uh, you know tapping on their masculine side mm. and um, having their own money mm. having everything going on for them Yeah. sort of independence mm. and then you are saying that we need we are making them wives mm. and then then when they become wives in as far as what i gather from your talk from what from your opinion is that then it becomes problematic when they become wives yeah. the th th my source of confusion is my point of confusion is why can't a woman be independent why can't she have her own money have a masculine side and still be a wife Who is who is actually having a problem with this with this arrangement? Is it the woman having a problem, or is it the man having a problem? I mean, is the man having a problem? Why is why do they have a problem with that? Women need what we call containment. Mm. Uh, a woman is only secure, or she feels secure, when she has a strong man around her. This is uh, this is not something that uh, that you're taught in school. It is just something that is in our farm where as evolved uh, beings. And uh, when a woman is not with a strong man, uh, she feels very exposed. In most cases, she tends to look for that, that strong man. So um, what happens is that uh, innately also women, uh, they know that uh, their sexual agency or their sexuality has some sort of value. And in many cases, women want to be compensated for that. Uh, they may not say it but that is a reality that that is why uh, women f get offended when you ask them what do you bring to the table because they feel that their sexuality is enough it is the man to bring something to the table okay because the women will tell you I, i'm bringing my womb for example i'm going to give you children i'll multiply your tribe and they feel that is enough Okay, so the challenge you are going to have is that uh, a woman there. A man is also bringing his gonads. Uh, yes, but uh, they feel you know we we it is it is a basically an agreed fact that eggs are expensive and sperms are cheap because one man can fertilize millions of women, okay, or impregnate them, but a woman when she's pregnant nine months will have to pass before another man can access her womb. So uh, because of that. Uh, sperms are not regarded as uh, that uh, valuable compared to the eggs or compared to the womb. So, men. Do also you agree with that statement? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That is true. It's just a biological fact. It's a biological fact. You see, for example, women. They are born. No, I'm, not, I'm not asking the the, the, the the fact in biology. Mm. I'm asking the fact. The, do you agree that that eggs are eggs are expensive? Yes, and eggs are expensive. Yeah, eggs are expensive also because they have a time limit. Women have menopause. Men don't have menopause. So uh, and then you know women are born with the eggs. They get start. They start getting depleted upon conception when they. The girl is born, the eggs are just getting depleted. By the time she reaches 35 now, she's going into what we call the geriatric pregnancy. So the quality of the eggs declines and then she goes into menopause. Men are not born with sperms. Men start producing sperms at puberty and they produce them the rest of their life. 
And that is why I'm telling you then if a woman comes to to a boardroom mm. and she puts her sexuality on the table, mm. it is correct. It is correctly so. That is she has. That yes. is the real estate. That's what she puts on the table. And why are men then having a problem that that is not enough? Actually, men don't have a problem with that. It's women who have a problem with that. It's women who are saying you don't treat them like sex objects. Okay? But also the, the challenge mm-hmm. is not even mm-hmm. that. Aliet. Yes. Uh uh-uh. uh you don't don't you you are you are, you are running into another thing. Mm-hmm. <laughs> what I'm asking is mm. today in the manosphere mm. women ask men are asking women to bring something other than their sexuality to the table. Yes. Men are saying that if you are going out on a date at bow box, you know, you can't just you, we, we are not going to eat your pussy at the bow box. Yes. We are going to eat something else. Yes. You see? Mm. So we, the bill is 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 3700. Give 1700, I give 2000. Give seven. That's what men are saying. If we are that's what men are saying. You, you are no. squinting your eyes. No. Men but, but let me let you finish. Yes, 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 <laughs> men are saying that. And the general idea around men are saying that women should bring more than sexuality to the table, correct? Correct. Yes. Yes. And The same men agree that the egg is more expensive and for me I don't think that when we are bringing things to the table we should be talking about sex uh, eggs and sperms. Mm. We should leave them out of the table because eggs and sperms are just eggs and sperms. We can decide okay that people like Rick have decided I've cut off their gonads and said that they are not going to give birth. Mm. You know? They have said that people like Goofy wamesema sisi hatutaki hiyo maneno ya watoto you know so when you bring those men to the table the idea of eggs and sperms is out of the table it's, it's irrelevant mm. Donge. so now let me clarify yeah yes <laughs> when men say what else do you bring to the table mm. they don't mean that uh, you should bring what is bringing because that will just make you another man Yes. Okay. So what men uh expect from women is femininity. They expect femininity is a very comforting a warm comforting quality. And uh most of these women uh we normally say that uh uh more the modern woman in many cases is just a man without a dick. Okay? Because uh what you find is that he's masculine or she's masculine, she's not submissive. She has accomplished a lot. Of course they have money, but you're never going to access that money. That money cannot be yours. Um, most men realize this. Some some don't. Of course if you are a very broke man, you may think that uh, having a woman who has money is going to make your life comfortable, but that is normally not the case. Because women the love of a woman is consumptive. It is going to consume. It does not give. That's why women are hypergamous. They are hypergamous because they are coming to consume. If women are coming to give, they will not require men who have higher status or higher accomplishments. That's why you find it's very common for a man who is successful like a CEO to marry a bartender, to marry a, a waitress and so on. But vice versa you don't find the same. A woman who is well accomplished is hardly ever going to go down to marry someone with the less accomplishments. So when men ask what do you bring to the table? That's what they are referring to because in many cases the women who are talking so much you will find this is a woman who is postmenopausal she cannot give you children okay you will find she is so sassy she is nasty she cannot give you peace she cannot support you in your career she has no feminine qualities so that is what happens and when men say that that is what they normally mean mm-hmm. what are you bringing to the table are you feminine are you even a woman um uh, when when you're still dating particularly the first date the man should pay for the date you know when you pay for the date uh it also means that uh the woman does not owe you anything and uh it also makes you in control of that uh situation because of in control of that date okay so as a man and you're also showing that you value your time and more than you value the money so that uh and you're thanking her for her time so i think it's just the right thing to do so that uh, you leave that place nobody is owing each other Uh, anything one of the scandals we had recently when you when you pay a date you owe me something bro no for them for the man it's just a drink hmm? it's just a drink but isn't that okay anyway mm. let's go let's go into the into the into the meat of this interview absolutely and uh, your book is really controversial and i would say scandalous okay 
Mm. You know, because the things that you say there are going to be very. Uh, hmm. How men lose their 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 frame to mm. women? So you say that as a man, stay close to your frame. Mm. Don't let it go. Yeah. Don't let somebody else hold on to it, especially mm. the woman in your life. Mm. And then you also go ahead and say that women often hold the frame. Mm. So you're telling the man that, look, your frame is the most valued, valued thing in your relationship. Yeah. Hold on to it. Mm. And, you, and you discuss it. And I want, to, I want to read a little bit of how you it's page 26, I think. It's page 26. Yeah. Yeah, it says that the the masculine frame is held by a man with certain qualities. These qualities must be cultivated by the by a man. In addition, a man must be aware of intersexual dynamics because the roles of the genders in relationships are no longer shaped by culture and tradition. But most importantly, you go very hard here and say a man should be ambitious. A man should be strong. A man should be dominant. A man should be confident, rational, decisive, intelligent, financially stable, undependable, emotionally stable, pers perspicacious. <laughs> Andrew Tate likes this. Or what Silas Gisiora uh, Nyanchwani, the author of 50 Memos of Men, refers to situational awareness. I read that and I felt, damn, that sounds like a, that sounds like a superman. Mm. That sounds like a superman. Yes, it is true. So, let's talk about the frame and why women always do. First of all, I want to ask you: women are women aware of the frame? Uh, Ninety-nine percent women are not aware of the frame. So naturally, they know it's there and they go for it. Um, they're not aware, so. They go for it, but they don't know that what that's called. We call it the frame, just for purposes of being able to uh, classify it and identify it as, mm. as, as something that we can talk about. Okay, let's talk about the frame. What is a, what is a frame? A frame is basically, uh, we can think of a frame as uh, the world in which a relationship takes place. Okay? You can also call it as an unwritten acceptance to, of someone's authority. So, for example, uh, if I'm deciding that uh, we are going to have a holiday, family holiday in Mombasa, and uh, she agrees she's in my frame, if I decide that we are going to live in Kariobangi, that's where we'll have a family home, then she's in my frame. So, uh, if the way your relationship takes place in terms of the decisions that are made that are affecting both of you, that is now what we call the frame. So, whoever is pulling the levers is the one holding the frame. So that is what a frame is. Mm. Yeah. And and why is it that most m most men in relationship sort of lose hold of the frame? Most men uh, lose hold of uh, the frame because especially early in the relationship. When the relationship starts, most mm. men normally hold the frame. That's why women find them attractive. But once they start a relationship and they start having sex, because of the dopamine and the sedation that comes with dopamine, most men sort of become addicted uh, to this dopamine uh, rush. And they think, because of what we call blue pill conditioning, they think that uh, the way to keep a woman is by deferring to her, validating her, buying her gifts and appeasing her. So that is how the men start losing their frame. Because when you start treating a woman as the prize, she starts thinking maybe she chose the wrong guy. Okay? So what normally happens is that uh, men, as soon as they start having sex, for example, what you'll find is that if it was a man who was engaged in a particular sport, maybe he was playing basketball, now he stops playing basketball and spends the time with his, his woman, maybe watching chick flicks, okay? Uh, if he had a certain hobby, now he abandons it for the woman. And you know the way love is, love is a gendered concept. And that's one of the things that uh, we normally miss. It's gendered in the sense that the love for a man for, and for a woman is not the same. For a man, the more you spend time with a woman, the more you, you like her, the more you love her. For a woman, the more she spends time with you, the more her love reduces or diminishes. And that is why men are normally encouraged. You need to take some time away 
for the from your wife or from your woman so that she can also have that sense of longing for you because if you are there so many times then it becomes boring for her and you know women get bored very fast compared to men 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 are creatures of habit a man that's why a man has no problem going to the same club or to the same barber shop that he used to visit when he was a child up to the time even when he's a ceo he goes to the same same barber shop he doesn't feel now he needs to upgrade and so on but women get bored with that or they, eating eggs and uh, bread yes eating eggs and bread uh, the roasted maize on the roadside and so on men have no issues with that so it's important to remember that so men lose their frame when they start deferring to the women and then they start listening also to the women okay so when the woman say something like uh, we need to buy this particular car the man instead of saying no or giving his own reasons even when he's not for it he's going to accept because he doesn't want to risk losing the pussy that is already getting the price yes not the not the price the pussy is getting from her okay that's why we talk about being pussy whipped and so on so he is no longer able to stand up as a man the woman on the other hand he's not going to tell him why aren't you saying no she's going to be happy that he's deferring to her but very quickly she starts getting frustrated that she has a weak man that's why we are saying the women will take the frame and they will not give it back easily but at the same time they will be very frustrated so that's why you see when men say happy wife happy life those are men who've given up their frame because they do whatever the wife wants just to maintain happiness in the relationship but in reality the woman only gets more and more frustrated because actually men who say that normally are not happy so what you find is that the women who've taken up the frame now if you look at the example of Will Smith and Jada Pinkett, she, Jada is having the frame in that relationship. But you see she gets very very frustrated. So most relationship where the woman is very strong and dominant, you will find that the woman is also very frustrated. A lot, of people, a lot of people a lot of people are saying right now that Smith has lost himself completely. And even the and even the women are starting to see it and saying what the fuck is going on here? Yeah. I mean, this is a guy that was calling somebody a wife and shouting in an Oscar mm. gala mm. that this is my wife don't joke with her mm. turns out the same night they were not man and wife mm. it would be nice to take will smith to a lab mm. you know and talk about the kind of man that he has become mm. or the men like him and honestly thinking i think i don't think it is not just you know the way we say that uh, alcoholism is a disease mm. you know Sometimes we ought to not just bash this man but also really look at what is wrong with them. Yeah. You know to treat them. Mm. So sometimes like as a man you can lose yourself so much that it is no longer your habit. It's, it's you are sick. You have you have been brainwashed in a certain way and you need treatment, a rehab. Okay, that is true and that is why I've also I've written actually this book because I've seen that it happens a lot and uh when I used to run uh, in the morning uh, along the road if you work Sunday morning if 6 a.m. 5:30 a.m. you'll see a lot of road accidents along the route whichever route so long as you're in Nairobi you'll see a lot of wreckages and in many cases you'll find that uh, people blame alcohol but when you sit with any of those men that are behind the wheels you'll find it's linked to a relationship many guys become alcoholics because they don't know what to do about their marriages about the relationships that they are in so what normally happens is women take the frame the challenge is once they've taken the frame of the leadership in that relationship they are going to lead you to the end of that relationship that is normally the problem so even the case of will smith uh, of course people are arguing that uh, he didn't want to divorce because he's going to lose a lot and so on but in reality ultimately the relationship uh, is going to come to an end and he love to just accept it and move on and he will lose what he would have lost 10 years ago yeah he will still lose it and uh, and of course even for him i think the main thing people normally forget we are not immortal you're going to die it's it is really not good to waste your time or your life in a very unhappy union and yet you have a very short time here on earth mm. yeah i said that this looks like a very uh a very robotic uh this is this is very robotic to me and like a superman yeah and when when a young man talks about listens to you mm. uh jacob or listens to a lead uh, to 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 tate yes and to tate If you look at somebody like Andrew Tate, he doesn't look normal to me. Mm. He looks like uh there is I feel like you know the way 
somebody goes into the wild, uh, wilderness mm. and really attains that that ultimate strength, mm. emotional strength of yeah. staying for so long without food, emotional strength with uh, staying without water, mm. uh, I coming coming to live. Uh, understanding loneliness mm. and beginning to live alone yeah so that this guy is so strong emotionally mm. whatever you throw at him it bounces back yeah and i feel like a lot of men are not able to attain that kind of pedigree in terms of strength mm. if you tell a young man of 30 to be confident to be uh, irrational to yes. be decisive to be intelligent yes. to be financially stable mm. to be dependable emotionally stable mm. uh, you know yeah let me let me speak to that because you yes. see life is it's like this eh? life is going to be hard yeah. now and uh, you're going to struggle now if you choose a hard life your life becomes easy if you choose an easy life your life becomes very difficult i don't know that you understand me yes for example if you are a lazy guy who just wants to sit at home and watch video play video games and watch tv and movies that is a very easy life but it's going to be very difficult because very soon you will need to be able to make your own money and pay your own bills if what you've been doing is living the easy life then your life is going to be very difficult so for men they have to embrace all these virtues you have to be strong you have to be physically strong okay because a strong body he is also the one that can cultivate a strong mind okay you have to be confident you have to be able to pursue your objectives and impose yourself in the world that's the only way you're going to stand out because most men are, are invisible and uh, there was a video that was playing uh, recently of a short uh, man staring at a woman dancing in a, in a nightclub most men are invisible to most women women don't even see them because women focus on the top 20% of men so for as a man if you want to have a good life whether where you have options in terms of women you have money and you have freedom you have to really work hard so you have to have all those qualities because even when you have money and you don't have uh, awareness of female nature that's mm. what happens to will smith you're going to have a very miserable life so you still must work hard have money but also understand women so that when you're being played you are able to understand and be able to take the right decision get yourself out of that mess mm. because there are so many men who are successful but they are better males you find someone is uh they've worked very hard they're in their late 40s early 50s he goes and picks a woman from the streets thinking that he can rehabilitate her and it creates a lot of mess in his life he ends up having a lot of ulcers and high blood pressure and meets his early demise just because he was ignorant about intersexual dynamics so men must be able to stand and differentiate themselves from the pack mm. for them to be able to be visible and for them to be able to attain uh, whatever their heart's desires are mm. yeah so uh for a man to be all these characteristics that you uh, to acquire all these things i imagine they must go after knowledge yes read and plug one two three yes 50 memos to men mm. and follow andrew tate on, on x yes but that is just one you must also do things yeah. you must work out you must go to the gym if it's going to the gym if it's running you must have a valuable skill because for example there are guys who say that they're working very hard if you're working very hard and you're still broke eh, it means you don't have a valuable skill and right now we have the youtube we have internet you have google look for a valuable skill master it and then you'll be able to make more money so that you that's what we call up we call attaining high value you must become a valuable person in the society as a man for you to be able to be rewarded because we say money follows value if you don't have value you're not going to have money coming towards you okay mm -hmm. the pillars of a full stack man yes that's an interesting one mm. what are the pillars yeah so when you for, when, as for a man we just knew that we needed to have a dick and that everything else follows yeah the world has changed because now women are also coming out to be like men okay so that means masculinity must be much more focused and sharp so when you talk about the pillars of a full stack man the idea is to it's convey the the fact that masculinity is not one dimension okay we used to think for example if you look at uh if you watch the uh, the marvel series of superman yes superman is a very strong man he has lesser eyes he can give you lesser beams he flies he can live he can lift buildings and he can go even uh, fly close to the sun 
but yet he's not a, an alpha male he's a beta male he's a beta male because when he falls in love with Lois Lane he stops his purpose and his purpose of course is to fight bad guys he starts he becomes a news caster and becomes uh, Clark Kent and Lois loses desire for him and goes after Batman so when you talk about a full stack man uh, the first thing we talk about is your mindset I've never been employed but I'm not I'm not saying that because I am proud of it I've never been employed but what I have always done is to do a lot of jobs online I have been working with the clients in America in Europe anywhere around the world I've used freelancer.com I've used Fiverr I've used Upwork I've used anything that you can think about online and in 2024 people are asking how can I get an extra shilling you know to plug the holes in my budget well i want to tell you that uh, over the last 3 years i've been writing a book that i've called the gold mine these are the kind of side hustle that you can do on the side to give you money i cover in this book a wide range of options to suit your interests and skills so in this book there is step by step instructions learn exactly how to get started with each side hustle from setting up your business to finding clients and making your first sale in this book also i share with you expert tips and tricks and i'll give you real life case studies see how others have used these side hustles to achieve financial freedom and create a life they love you are going also to learn how to start a freelance writing business and learn high paying clients how to create and sell your own digital products such as ebooks and online courses how to build a profitable affiliate marketing business how to leverage social media to grow your brand and attract your clients and much more so thank you very much back to the program so the mind of a man what we call the back end game because your mind cannot be seen but the way you you conduct yourself will convey the kind of mentality you have so for example you need to be persistent as a man so if you are a man and you are pursuing something let's say uh, a dialogue with jagero uh, started this uh, podcast and then after two months you realize it's not picking up then you get frustrated you trash all the cameras and say this is a waste of my time you see that is lack of persistence and it also shows a weak mind so a man must be persistent he must be confident he must be able to set goals and pursue them so that is the mindset of of a man that is full stack then you also must have the body because your body is what gives you what we call command presence and mm. uh, the way we've evolved even women they choose men who are who tend to be taller than them who look strong men who are capable of men with a force. beautiful beard like mine yeah sometimes sometimes yes. uh, there's a beard <laughs> gang. there's a beard gang the women of course will have men with beards mm. but in general uh, beards also show a high level of testosterone so normally is an attraction marker okay strong jaw lines and so on so you must have that uh that physique okay don't be out of shape don't be too skinny don't be fat mm -hmm. just be someone at least who looks like can take care of himself you look like you can protect a woman because that is hardwired uh in the dna of of women that's there in their in their farmware and then of course right now in the world we live in which is largely capitalistic you also need to have money money gives you freedom uh, when you have money you can choose to do whatever it is that you want you can go for a holiday you can choose to relax and so on you can choose to invest in something that is uh, high return and so on but when you don't have money you cannot do that so it's very very important to be able to have money and also money is what makes it possible for you to do to provide to the people that mm -hmm. that you care about so that is very very important and then lastly uh, to be a full stack man you also must understand intersexual dynamics you mm. must understand female nature so you must understand what is it that keeps a woman attracted and attached to you you need to understand hypergamy you need to understand things like uh, preselection and so on and so forth reset your blue pill beliefs mm. yes what are the blue pill beliefs the blue pill beliefs are the beliefs that we actually are taught when you're growing up i believe like uh if you treat her like a queen she will treat you like a king okay mm. you hear that a lot that's a very beautiful statement yes but it's completely false because when you treat a woman like a queen she will treat you like a subject she will not treat you like a king okay that's what normally happens because when you treat her like a queen she feels that you are lower than her 
And that's why we normally say if you treat her like a star, she treats you like a fan. You become like one of our fans. So when you glorify your pedestal as a woman so much, it shows her that you are beneath her and she will look for a man who does not treat her like that. That will be the man now that she deems to be higher than her because women look for men who are better than them. So that is one of the, the blue pill beliefs. Another blue pill belief is that uh, you need to spend uh, time, a lot of time with a woman for her to actually, as a form of appreciation of her, which again is also not true. You of course have to spend some time with her, but not a lot of time and not all the time. And that's the mistake many men actually make when they abandon their hobbies and they want to hang out with their wives uh, all the time. Because that's what her girlfriends are for. She should hang out with her girlfriends, <laughs> not with you. When you hang out with her, you, be <laughs> you become her girlfriend. And now you can no longer, you can no longer make her wet. So that is what happens. <laughs> so many men make that mistake. Because when you hang out with her, you start gossiping with her. She's then going to start telling you about her uh, all the bullshit that they are discussing with their girlfriends, the quarrel she had with her mother, her little sister, and so on. And those are things also now that make you enter into a feminine space and make you also erode your masculinity. That's why even in, uh, in most of our African cultures, like in the Luos, among the Luos, the man had what we call the Abila, where he sat with his sons, and every woman, every wife had her own house. And the Kikuyus, they had the Tingira, where the man also sat. They respected that uh, there needed to be some boundaries between the man and his wives. But because of uh, urbanization, we are forced to live in close quarters with our wives for long periods of time. And that also has also brought the challenge that we have in marriages today. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> Understand the game, genuine desire, and how you can make things like hypergamy, preselection, social proof, and so on can work for you. Yes. Mm. So hypergamy, for example, many men who are broke really hate women for being hypergamous. They feel that women are bad, they're gold diggers, and so on. But you see, hypergamy can also work for you. Uh, we have what we call the imposter lifestyle. You look at uh, a lot of uh, Americans, like uh, rap artists, they hire all those Lamborghinis and the Ferraris and so on. And many times women don't know the difference between a uh, Ferrari that is hired and the Ferrari that is yours. That, just that look itself is going to win them over. So we must understand that uh, both men and women are very uh, superficial. Women, for example, will look for men who are tall. The tall man, the height cannot put food on the table. Height cannot make a man nice or gentle. Height is, has got nothing to do with a man's character. But women will look for tall men. The same way men will also look for a big nyash, big breast, and so on. But those don't influence the character of a woman. Okay? Mm. It does not make a woman uh, suitable as a wife. It doesn't make her feminine. It doesn't make her submissive or cooperative. So because of our superficial nature also, men make mistakes and women also make mistakes. But being aware of this... Uh, when a man is aware of this, you can also take advantage of it. Mm. Yes, the, the most beautiful pillar that you've talked about is mm. <laughs> in terms of choosing a, a man, mm. a woman. And you're saying that uh, you must have standards. Mm. You know, don't go for low-hanging, washed-up fruits. Yes. It's what very are, important. About what are low-hanging and washed-up fruits? So um, we need to understand eh, that uh, as men, a man is born without value. And that's why men have to work very hard and become valuable. Men, a, man, a man must have something to bring to the table. And that is why uh, very broke men, like men in their 20s, they really struggle with relationships. You can have a relationship in that short term, but a man who has more money all soon comes and takes the girl away. So a man needs to create his value. But a woman needs to preserve her value because a woman is born with value. And that's why virginity was given a premium uh, in the olden days because it came, that also increased uh, the woman's value. Okay? Because a woman who is uh, a virgin is more able to guarantee paternity compared to a woman who's run around the block. Yeah. Mm. Let's talk about. Uh, hey, we are recording, please. Let's talk about um, why a man should not marry early. Yes, this is very important because, uh, but they have seen this thing play out, eh? and it destroy the lives of men that I know. 
Um, this is particularly the case if you are not coming from a, a rich family because men who come from rich family, their families are able to support them. But if you are coming from a humble background and you marry early, what normally happens is that uh, you are not able to build yourself to become much more valuable. Look at cases where maybe a man has dropped out, maybe at form four. He's a form four liver. He makes a girl pregnant, maybe he's 21 or 20, and they start their family at that particular age. So what happens is, because of his low education, he doesn't have a valuable skill. In most cases, he's not going to be doing a well-paying job at that particular time. So what will happen is that uh, he is going to start now raising this family. He has a little baby, he has a wife. Okay, in all likelihood, also the wife is also not going to be earning much. So, this guy immediately is getting into a rat race. The child needs to be fed, he needs to pay rent, he needs to take care of his wife, and that, of course, comes with all the other responsibilities in laws. He needs to pay Mahari, he has to travel for funerals of relatives and extended families, and so on. So, problem number one if you are 21 or 20, in all likelihood, your wife is either going to be the same age or maybe you're even older than you. So that comes with the problem of submission. A woman who views you as her peer is not going to submit to you. Okay? You'll find that you are a man in that uh, marriage, but you're not able to stamp your authority. Okay? So that is problem number one. Problem number two, this woman is going to be very frustrated because you're broke. You're not able to provide her the kind of lifestyle that she wants. Maybe she'll be comparing herself with other friends or even her own relatives will be telling her, you know, what kind of place are you living in? This place is not nice. This place is dangerous. This husband of yours, why can't he pull up his socks? He's, no, he's always broke and so on and so forth. Look at your shoes, look at your dress and so on. So this woman is going to be very frustrated. It makes for a very difficult, difficult marriage. The third one is, uh, as a man, you have not attained much. Because you're still young, you've not experienced a lot of failure, a lot of success, you're not very much exposed to the world. So it also means that uh, your frame is weak. One of the uh, important qualities of a man is to be a problem solver. You have to be able to solve problems. You cannot solve problems when you're not very exposed to the world and you've not been tested. So what you'll find with a man like that, he suffers from a lot of anxiety. A lot of the things he's going through, he's going to be experiencing for the first time. And that is why you find so many cases where uh, these people marry early, they also tend up also to divorce in their early 30s. Because what you'll find is that uh, the woman will suffer what we call buyer's remorse. A very, in a very short while, this woman will realize she made a mistake. This was too early. This is not the right man for me. Uh, issues are going to be escalating because this man cannot solve. This. Both of you are young. You cannot really solve those issues. There's a lot of pressure. Kids are coming up. You need to take them to kindergarten, to school, and so on and so forth. So in many cases, most men who don't have proper guidance, they now fall to alcohol. They start drinking because uh, the pressure is too much. And once you start drinking and you have a very frustrated wife at home, you start avoiding going home. Okay? These, so are, the, these are the men that you, are, you, you meet when you are going for the morning run. Yes. You start avoiding going home. Uh, you become an alcoholic. And in many cases, these guys start avoiding. Uh, so you'll find what happens is he goes home very late, 2 a.m., 3 a.m., he blacks out in the sofa. Or if he goes to bed, the wife chases him out, tells him, you know, you're smelling like a latrine. You cannot sleep here. Okay, go and shower or go and whatever. Because it is normally the truth anyway. So it breaks that relationship. It continues breaking down. And many of these guys, they pick lifestyle diseases along the way. High blood pressure, ulcers, gout, and Feet so on. on. Mm. Yeah, and so on. And it messes mm. them up. So normally it is not a good idea to marry early. A man should marry. For me, I would say in your 30s. Definitely not in your 20s. Mm. And there's also an important reason for this. In the past men were encouraged to marry early. And there was a good reason for that. Because when a man reaches his 20s also, uh, most men become very destructive because he's restless, he has a lot of energy. Uh, in most cases, when these men were told to marry, they got a wife and family tied them down. They, start, they stopped these wayward behaviors, drinking alcohol, kuvuta bangi, and all that, because now they had a family. And also remember the dopamine, right? The dopamine that you get from having regular sex. It also makes men mellow down. And that's why you find that even in the police and in the army, they get men who are in their 20s, men who have a lot of testosterone, 
uh, they don't have a lot of uh, investments in this particular world. That's why they can be used as cannon fodder. In the front line, when they go to war, those are the men you put at the front. They can take high risks and, uh, and they can be able to risk their life without worrying so much. But as you grow older, you start recognizing or uh, appreciating the value of life and so on. So a man should build a masculine frame and that takes time. You use your 20s to focus, get a purpose, focus on it. By the time you're in your 30s, you'll actually have stacked your wins and established trust with yourself. You're a man who understands himself. That is the right time to marry, not when you're too young. Mm. Yeah. But again, they say don't marry too old. Um, okay, I don't know what marrying too old is because I understand like uh, Njonjo married when he was 50 or 51 and he lived to see his grandchildren. So of course it also depends on your, on your health and health is also something I talk about. You must take care of your health. Right now, I think uh, our, our, what do we call it? Our, our lifespan is about 60 years thereabouts and that's why i, I tell guys if you're in your 30 if you're 30 years you're already at midlife you don't have to reach 45 because people die, die early nowadays mostly because of lifestyle diseases so and if you remember um jomo kenyatta married mamangina he was 78 i think she was 20. they had several children healthy children so and that's why i mentioned earlier that uh the value of a man it does not dis decline as quickly as that of a woman. That's why we say that men age, uh, no, men mature but women age. So women, they age like milk, men age like wine. Okay, so that is the difference. The, 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 the effect that time has on the women, it also comes very fast compared to men. So men are born with no value, they are very broke in their 20s. But at that time, women are, women are the highest value. Mm -hmm. When now the men are hitting their financial stride in their mid-30s, 40s, the women's values are declining. So it's very important to understand that, uh, that cycle. There yeah. are one of the problems that a lot of people have with, uh, you know, with opinion makers. Mm. Like Influencers. You, yes. In the monosphere is... And I also agree is that sometimes there is no research to back it up. For example, when you talk about women always raise weak men, it's uh, a lot of people will find it very difficult to understand, but then somebody will be like, show me the, the research behind it. Mm. So when you talk about women always raise weak men, I think... It's a it's a it's a good it's a good thing to say, uh, but then I also feel like when I was reading that part, you don't give women the arsenal or the tips on how to raise a strong man. So, but then let's go back again and just uh, talk about uh, women always raise weak men. Yes. What does that mean? First of all, I don't say women always raise weak men, okay? Mm. I say women often raise weak men. There's statistics to back this up. Uh, the challenge we have, of course, in our, in our region or in our country, we don't have a lot of research. But in the U.S., most of the children who are in juvenile, juvenile detention, they are children who are fatherless. They are children who are raised by single mothers. So this, the statistic here is very, very strong. And uh, compared to children who are raised by single fathers, it's the reverse is the case. And uh, it has actually made led many people, it has led many people to argue that women make very lousy parents compared, contrary to the popular belief. You know, like in court nowadays, when children are of a certain age, if you are divorcing, for example, by default, uh, the custody is given to the mother. Uh, the assumption is that uh, the mother is going to be a better guardian. But statistics show that that is, no, that is actually not the case. So I'm aware that there are men who've been raised by single mothers, and they've turned out to be okay. They've turned out to be fine, but they are not the majority. They are actually the minority. And uh, there's a reason to this. Uh, it is not something that, uh, for example, women should take... Uh, uh, offense about because it is just the truth. The governing principle, uh, the governing emotion for women who are parenting is normally fear and anxiety. If uh, you see a situation where a father, 
for example, is throwing the child in the air and the child is giggling and coming down, you'll find the mother is horrified. She's worried that this child can fall. Okay? In the same same way, even when a child, uh, like a boy now, he falls down and starts to cry. The father will tell him, just get up, uh, rub yourself. The mother will say, oh, sorry, what has happened? I'm so sorry. Oh, oh are you hurt? You know, she's going to give that energy uh, of fear and anxiety to him. And so, uh, and then the other thing is that you'll find, even this thing of calling a child kababa, uh, it's something that women who do. Men don't mommy. do that. A mommy and all that. Mm. Because women want, they seek validation from their children. Okay? They want their children to appreciate them. Fathers don't do that. A father will not call his child kababa and all that rubbish. Okay? He's going to call him by his name. He's going to be able to discipline him. And he's going to, the relationship between a father and the son is the relationship between a father and a son, not friends. But women want to be friends with their children. They don't really appreciate that this is someone who needs to be guided. Okay? Then they want to be friends. If the child says, I want pizza, she's going to buy pizza for her. Even I if don't she, think that is friendship. It is. It is. It is. It, it, okay, they think it's friendship. Yes. Women think it's friendship. <laughs> they think it is friendship. Yeah. And they value Because that. I can, I believe you can be a friend with your child and mm. still give proper guidance. Yes. You know? Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. You can't, you, if you are a good friend, a good friend does not give you everything you want. It is true. Yeah. Many women struggle with that. Actually, that is the point. Yes. That's the point that I want to make. They feel that they, they'll alienate their children from themselves if they're hard on them. Mm. So they coddle them. They do helicopter parenting. And that's the challenge. What is helicopter parenting? Uh, <laughs> They don't want the children to be by themselves. They want to follow them. They hover uh, above them. Like, uh, a, like a drone over the yes, time. like a drone. Where is, where is it? Who are you playing with? What games are you playing? They cannot leave them by themselves because mm. they are afraid they'll get hurt. Okay? And that the challenge with that for a, for a boy child, that is a very uh, destructive. Because a boy, the only way a boy becomes strong is when he gets hurt. He's going to know that if I climb on this chair and fall, it's going to hurt me. He'll know the height that is dangerous and the height that is not. But when you coddle him so much, he is not exposed to any kind of danger. He's not going to be able to understand how the world works. Okay? So that is what happens. And you find that in situation where the child goes to school and they are disciplined. You'll find the mothers quarrel with the teachers. In most cases, fathers don't do that. But you'll find it's a mother driving to school and saying, how do you punish my child? Shame on you, do you have a child? Do you know what it takes to have a child? You know, things like that. So that is what, that's the point that we are making. When you say that in most cases, uh, women raise weak men. It's because of that. And it's also very, very important, particularly when the woman is divorced. Uh, women emote so much in the presence of their kids. So you'll find that uh, the woman could, is probably having a phone call with her baby daddy. They probably have a disagreement. And she starts crying in the presence of the child. And, uh, and the child asks him, Mommy, what is wrong? And he says, you know, your dad is really frustrating me. I was telling him to send school fees. He's refused. Please, when you become a man, never do this to a woman. And this is what is messing up Will Smith, by the way. <laughs> Will Smith also had... Uh, uh, as, uh, he grew up seeing difficulties between his, his parents and he swore that he will never hurt the woman that is going to be in his life. So what normally happens when a woman sees, uh, when a son sees his mother suffering on account of his father, these are the men who are never able to put their, their women on to, online or hold them to account because he feels that if he tells the woman, don't do this, don't do that, or if he breaks up with her, he's going to do what his father did to his mother. So he grows up with a lot of guilt and a lot of trauma in him. And there's a man now who cannot enforce boundaries when they become adults. So that is what happens. Women are not able to... Uh, they, because of this habit of seeking psychosocial support from their sons, these sons take up the burden of adults when they are still young. And when they become adults, they're not able to distinguish. That's what we call enmeshment. They're enmeshed into the problems that their parents had, and they're not able to distinguish their own problems and the problem of their parents. And they become very weak partners later on in life. Mm. They cannot put themselves first because they see a reflection of their mother in their partners. And I think it should not be like that. Mm. I, I think that you should be able to separate two, two things, mm. you know? For example, I usually say that uh, my, my, my father liked the bottle and he, was, he used to beat my mother. Mm. And some people say that if you do that or 
experience that, then you're going to be a wife batterer too. Mm-hmm. And because that's the that's what you know happens, but I feel like as a as a human being, you should be able to to use your your six senses yes. and see. For example, Will Smith, mm. he should have known exactly what is going on in that relationship. Mm. You see, the nitty gritties of that relationship, so that she can be able to take that relationship and isolate it. Mm. You know, yeah. and then also isolate his own relationship. Yes. So that he doesn't he doesn't have the relationship that he's having mm. the same as his mother because they are different relationships. Mm. You know, this this two parks lady is not is not his fa- is not his mother. Yes, yes. It is not, mm. and we can all agree that that is not his mother. Yeah. You know, mm. that guy he is not his father. Mm. He can never be his father. Yeah. So I don't understand why people suddenly decide that we, I want to be like that person. I want to be. Like, we are different people. It's 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 not done consciously. I think you you had a lady called Skolamik here. Mik, yes, Skolamik yes. You know, I th- I think she spoke about the shadow, and uh, normally as human beings, there there is childhood trauma that we pick, eh? and we normally say that when you are fully integrated, you integrate your ego and uh, and your shadow, so that you become a fully developed human being. And normally that is done through therapy, through shadow work, and so on. So if Will Smith lacks that awareness, he's not going to be able to distinguish. Uh, between his own experiences and the impact that his mother's experiences has, has had on him. And then also we are not the same. For example, if, if you expose two people to the same level of trauma, they are not going to be affected in the same way. So some people are affected like you now, you came out okay. There are some people who, came, who come out from such situations hating their fathers, hating alcoholics, or even becoming alcoholics uh, themselves. So I think that is just something that uh, we need to realize. But the awareness is important that uh, what happens in your childhood, what you witness in your childhood can actually affect your future relationships. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> never take a back people change bro this is very important uh people change people don't change people do yeah so the thing is this people of course change but very few people change and uh you don't want to be part of that experiment you don't want to take your chances <laughs> because you see if people changed eh, it will then be important to look at people's CVs and check their criminal past. You see in Kenya here, I talk about the uh, certificate of good conduct and yeah. so on and so forth. Yes, because it's because of a recognition that people tend to remain largely the same. People tend to remain stable. Okay, If you're a violent man, you are likely to become violent your whole life because we our personalities tend to be stable. They don't become disruptive because, you know, if they kept changing in any case, then there would be nothing called a personality. Yes. The reason we have a personality is because it's something that can be stable. Yeah, I know if someone is funny, someone is sad, someone gets angry quickly, someone likes drinking alcohol, someone likes smoking bang, those are things that don't change. And that's why we say that a leopard does not change their spots. So the thing about taking her back, eh, mm-hmm. when... Uh, when you've tried working we, out, we are, we are actually for the for the benefit of the audience. We are talking about the fact mm. that you, you you are telling men yes that if you have left a woman or a woman has left you, don't take her back. Yes, you know. And there is something interesting that you say here on your book, uh, page two seventy two seventy five. Mm. Lots of masculinity gurus will tell you that you can fix it. Mm. You know that you, all you need to do is to learn her love language. Mm. I've heard this a thousand times. Yes, her yes. love language. Rick is always yapping about it. Mm. <laughs> you know, he has got, Rick, what is your love language? What do you want to do yeah, so so <laughs> let me read, man. <laughs> uh, I want to read. But nine times out of ten, once she sees you as a better, you know, <laughs> your choice of language is funny, man. <laughs> you know, in tech, we are always talking about, ah, you are a techie. Yeah, I am. Better. Mm. Eh? When she's reading better, it is not good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This beautiful videos that Jagero is doing on his podcast, what does he do when he's not doing podcasts? So what we do when we're not doing podcasts is to make videos for our clients. We make documentaries, uh, we make podcasts for other clients, uh, we shoot photography, we cover events, we cover conferences, and we do a lot more. We have every equipment that you need to make videos for yourself. 
So if you want to reach out to us to make videos for you, you can go to comedia.co.ke and you can contact me or you can just contact us with the email that we're going to leave at the end of this video. So thank you very much. Back to the program. Yeah, go so, ahead. So what happens is that uh, when people start relationships, they nobody ever has plans or intends to end them. You start because you love each other. There's some degree of attraction, okay? So by the time you're breaking up, whether she's leaving you or you are leaving her, it means you've really exhausted your options. You've tried your best, okay? Now, what normally happens is that, uh, and this is something I've seen many times, when you leave a woman, especially when men leave women, uh, many women are caught by surprise, okay? And uh, if you are a fairly decent man, she's going to try to get you back, okay? Uh, Mainly to cover the embarrassment. You know, women really, women are very nasty to each other. They shame each other and they backbite each other. So to cover that embarrassment, because what I say, and so on. So that's the first thing she wants to cover is that shame, okay? She's going to come back and say, I'm very sorry, I did this, and so on and so forth. She's going to beg you. Uh, to get back and promise that she's going to change. What normally happens is that uh, once she does that, uh, in many cases, eh, for guys who go back, uh, the reason she wants you back is because she wants to to one up you. She, women always want to have the upper hand. Okay, she wants to be the one to leave you. So I've seen cases where she, you actually go back, the relationship starts, and of course it goes back to what it was, because you've not changed and she has not changed. And that's why I also say when people don't change. She's not going to change because you broke up. You're going to remain the same. So people will go back. If she was cheating, she'll continue cheating. If she disrespected you, she's going to continue disrespecting you. So ultimately now what is going to happen is she will now plan to leave you. She doesn't want to be the one to be left. So in most cases, they leave. But the important thing here is that uh, the amount of effort you put into repairing a broken relationship is way, way more compared to the amount of effort that you'll need to start a new relationship with another woman. Because if this woman already disrespected you, she's not going to start respecting you overnight. It's much, much easier to get a fresh woman who you don't have any background with, that woman is m in a better place to respect you and appreciate you than a woman you've already broken up with. That's why we say that uh, don't go, don't root through the, the trash that you've already taken to the cab. Once you've thrown away rubbish, don't go through it again. It is out. It's just like vomit. You vomit, don't go lick your vomit. So that's very, very important. And... Uh, Many men normally think that uh, because of the blue pill beliefs like one night is that she's the only one for me and so on, you go back to her and in most cases you have a premium tears. Mm. Yeah. They always say that behind every successful man is a woman. It's a good woman. Do you agree with that statement? No. Hmm. Mm. Because I, I, I'm not surprised you don't disagree. Mm -hmm. You don't agree because then you say women kill dreams mm. how do women kill dreams um, the way women kill dreams is this eh? the qualities that make you attractive to a woman are the same qualities that will make her feel insecure so she will try to kill those qualities so what this means is this. of course not all women do it but a number of women do it You'll observe that many guys, when they get married, they become fat, they get out of shape, they stop pursuing their hobbies, they start sitting at home. When they used to go outside now, they're sticking at home and so on. So what happens is this. Mm. When uh, a man is very ambitious and driven and physically fit and outgoing, that makes him very attractive. Those are what we call the alpha qualities. But once a woman marries you, she wants to secure you to herself. If you continue going out, you're going mm. to meet other women. She will not want that. Yes. If you continue looking physically attractive, that is going to be competition. And uh, I actually know of women who intentionally they add fat into the food of their husband so that the guys hey. so that the guys can grow fat. I know of women who discourage their husbands uh, from being physically fit through shaming. They tell you whoever say in Baba. Why are you trying to hang on to your youth? You are now a father. You have children. 
why don't you age gracefully accept accept your age why are you trying to look young and all they shame you they tell you are you trying are you seeing someone why are you working out so so hard nowadays you know they try to induce some guilt in you and also you find so many men uh, once you settle down uh, you want to take a risk maybe you want to start a business okay she will be uh, afraid of losing the comfort that you're already having because if the business is 2 million and now you're telling her you know we've been going for these trips in dubai now for the next 2 years let's let's stop these trips let's start this business because you have to make some sacrifice she'll tell you no know, uh, what makes you think that business will succeed you know we must get a balance let's go to dubai and maybe start a smaller business and so on and so forth so or if you have a, a, a career that is outside the country that makes you travel you tell you know this is a young family you should not be away from your family and so on and so forth so that is what normally happens and uh, women also kill dreams without even knowing because the dopamine that men get from regular sex also makes men docile and sedated and that is why you find that docile uh, and sedated yes you find that uh, you'll notice this in sports teams eh? uh, if you look at people like Eliud Kipchoge and the Kenyan runners even football teams you'll find that they go for training camps and the reason you go for training camps is so that you can be away from women because when you are with the women and you're having regular sex dopamine is going to make you lose that aggression and uh, the thirst for success it's going to make you more sedated and smug so guys go for training camps for a number of weeks so that you bring up your testosterone levels and it makes you more aggressive and more focused on winning in life so when men get married and they start getting this regular sex it also makes them uh calm down and sedated and less ambitious the drive to push themselves normally declines for many men so that is how the dreams are killed and that's why it's also important to marry once you are accomplished because also when you marry early and then you start getting this dopamine you tend to stagnate and stagnation is a very bad thing for a man <laughs> yeah yeah uh, let's talk about what you really wanted us to talk about uh, that is the what did you call it sexual tra- transmutation what is mm. it <laughs> so sexual transmutation it's a big subject uh, we really can't cover it but we'll just touch on it yes what normally happens is that um, if you look at a, a woman when a woman's body produces an egg if this egg is not fertilized it is washed away with her menses in terms of the menstrual periods but when a man produces sperm sperms are not washed away we could have the nightly emissions that you have when you're a teenager and even in your 20s and so on but in general this sexual energy can be transmuted we talk about trans- transmutation is important because it is not the same as repression you don't repress sex you transmute it transmute just means rechanneling it uh, to other forces uh, the indians and the 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 orient the, the western part of uh, the globe they have really worked on this much better because they talk about chakras and prana and so on because if you look at uh, their gurus for example most of those guys live like hermits and uh, you'll find the kind of powers they have in terms of uh, the powers they have of concentration on particular things or even physical feats they are much more advanced than those of the ordinary men and so we normally say that uh, even the drive to sex uh, i think psycho, the psychoanalyst Sig- sigmund freud also talked about it the drive to sex is actually a drive to create not just procreate but actually to create and that's why men are builders and men are creators a lot of uh, the best painters the best architects most of them were men and a part of it is because of the way they transmuted their sexual energy a very good example is uh, steve jobs was a very good example of this for uh, the longest time steve jobs you live without a woman like when he was living working on his most important projects he was doing that and uh, if you look at people like nelson mandela and even the poet uh, ezra pound most of his poets he wrote them when he was in prison the one of some some of his best poems even the people who wrote some of the greatest books they wrote them when they were away from uh, female companionship so it speaks to the way in which a man can actually transmute uh, his sexual energy so the point is that it is not the case that the only way of releasing sexual energy is through sex but you can actually transform it into others even the the catholics through celibacy it's a form of trying to transmute sexual energy so that you can actually focus it 
on a higher purpose. Mm. Yeah. Mr. Liet, always a pleasure having you. Thank but you. now we can't finish this episode without you talking about yourself mm. and about your books. Yes. Specifically the book the, the the latest books. Yes. So I'd give you an opportunity because I believe that part of uh, uh, what I do at Dialogues with Jagero is to promote this channel and to promote the people that come to this channel. Yes. So it's important to sell your books on this channel. Thank you very much. <laughs> yeah, so you can talk about Unplugged 2. Unplugged 2, yes. Unplugged 3. Yes. And tell the audience where you can be able, people can find, because people are already asking. Yes. I put a, a, a picture of it on Dialogues with Jagero. Okay. And people are asking where can I get that book. Oh, and also... You. Um, a lot of my, by the way, a lot of my followers are in South Africa. Okay. About 40% uh -huh. of the followers of Dialogue to Jagiru are in South Africa. Okay. So probably you might tell them wh whether they can buy the ebook on on, e on Amazon or something like that. Okay. Mm. Yeah, so uh, thank you so much. Yeah. Unplugged 2 is available mm. on Amazon. Even Unplugged 3. All of my books are actually available on Amazon, both on Kindle and paperback. Mm. So it's available on Amazon. And right now, Unplugged 2 and 3 are available both in Nuria Bookstore and Textbook Center. Mm. So you can buy in either way. Textbook Center are availing it in all of the, their branches. So the title of Unplugged 2 is Forging Prosperous Solidified Men. And it's important to, to take note of the word forging. When you look at forging, you see when you talk about iron and blacksmiths, that is what you, you forge iron into a knife or into whatever shape. Mm. So it means it's a process of heating. It's a difficult process. And uh, in the book, I talk about uh, some of the experiences that all men should have, including mm. failure, heartbreaks, and things like that. So uh, masculinity is something that develops through adversity. It's not through comfort. Actually, the biggest enemy of masculinity is comfort. And that is also why uh, being raised by a single mother is fraught with risk, because mothers give you comfort. Mothers do not know how to expose their children to adversity and to danger, but that is what fathers are capable of doing because the father knows that the son can survive. The mother doesn't know that. The mother thinks the child will be hurt. Okay? So because of that, they coddle them so much. So um, Unplugged 2 is about uh, giving men the tools to make them very strong, very self-aware, and uh, oriented towards success in the modern world. Particularly, it also helps them to understand female nature and to be able to cope with modern relationships and modern marriages. I also have Unplugged 3, whose focus is just on the modern woman and female nature. And it brings out different aspects of female nature that... Uh, uh, most of us have not understood for the longest time. For That's what we should talk about. Yes, because really. what what people actually the the propaganda out mm. is that your women hate us. You have okay. nothing. You have, you have no love left for women. Okay. And so you guys were hurt. Mm. People don't even know that you're married and having kids, bro. Okay. They just think that you are another Andrew Tate. Yes. Yeah, Balaganting. So it is so interesting because people tell me, or I've seen women say, you know. Jacob is misleading men and he's happily married, you know. So it is so interesting. But uh, you know the important thing is that nobody says I'm wrong. They'll just say you are toxic, you are hard. We normally say, argue the case, not the attorney. Don't talk about the attorney. What is the case? What am I saying? Is it true? Is it false? Is it backed by evidence or it's not? That's what we should focus on. But you know about female nature, for example, recent research shows that uh, among Gen Z women, these are women who are born after 2000. Eh? When you ask them what are the things that they want in life, a marriage or a relationship with a man is number seven. So they don't prioritize men at all. And this is something very important to remember because in a situation now where marriage rates are declining and divorce rates are increasing, we need to really understand female nature because remember, there is no patriarchy in place anymore. Patriarchy imposed order and control in the society. And women were forced to depend on men. Now women have their money. They don't need men for security. They don't even need men for sex. They have dildos. They have all sorts of things. So women are able to express their female nature in an unfettered fashion. So Unplug 3 talks about this. And we've seen situations where most men, even married men, if you are married and you have children, and you start becoming broke or you lose your source of income, most women leave those marriages. But you see the same, same thing happening in lower animals. You see the way 
the praying mantis it bites off the head of the male once it has got the sperm the octopus does the same thing it eats the male after getting the sperms so you find that there is this aspect where modern men have been made into what we call sperm donors once she has your child she no longer needs you those are things that uh, we need to understand and that's covered in uh, unplugged 3 yeah so i'm jacob aliet on facebook and mm. then unplugged vip on tiktok and youtube great yeah we have to end this interview thank you so much thank you so much we are going to play darts with the, you and rix and we mm. are going to play together uh, he's so poor at it i'm going to see how you know you can you can <laughs> All right, people of the internet, thank you very much for tuning in to this episode with Jacob Aliet, the author of Unplugged series, and many others. Yes. You know, you have many, many other books that you have done, and it is it is fair to mention that uh, Aliet has also done The Levant Church, Magnolia Flower, Shoreline Origin, Shoreline Evolution, The Photographer, Transference, Strange Encounters, A Slice of Darkness for Breakfast. Um, I'm inviting you all to my book launch for Unplugged 2, 4th November in Maxon Suits, Hallingham. So follow my socials, Jacob Aliet, to see how you can book a seat. Thank Great. Mm. All right. I hope you enjoyed this episode. I would like to ask you that for us to bring good guests into this show, we need subscribers. No, nobody wants to come to a show that has got two subscribers, three subscribers. So when you enjoy this show and you say, I want this guest to come into this show, like a lot of you are asking me, bring this guest into this show, this guest will always look at my subscriber base and decide whether I am worth their time. When all of you there, they'll say, I want to be where people are. So please consider subscribing. Not just subscribing, but hitting that notification bell so that every time an episode is out, you're duly, you know, notified. We have our socials, TikTok, uh, Instagram, Twitter, now X, and YouTube, where we are, and you're listening to this. So thank you very much. Until another episode, bye for now. <laughs>